there is one time in particular when he was, uh, you know, speaking and doing this service instantly, what popped up in my head was probably one of the most lowest uh, moments of my of my life. Trigger warning. Suicide. Mentions of suicide causes and prevention. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to another episode of Brave Conversations. Conversations. To my new people. Welcome. Hello. You get my Siri voice. And to my brave conversationalists, konnichiwa. Now, if you want the special greeting, you yourself have to become a brave conversationalist. Now, how do you do that? How do they do that? All you have to do is subscribe to our channel or subscribe to our podcast on whatever podcast streaming platform you are on. Hit that notification bell so you can know when I post. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yep, let's Let's get get into it. it. Let's do it. In the temporal realm, the testimonies within an individual are considered especially insignificant. On this podcast, the dedicated hosts who articulate these personal narratives are members of an elite community known as the Brave Conversationalists. These are their stories. Okay, so... Last week, I did a video on hopelessness, which you should go see and watch. And this is actually kind of, this is not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences when it comes to the kingdom of God, okay? But in that episode, I mentioned that John 10.10 was my verse. It saved my life. It saves my life now. Actually, I kind of recited it a little bit in my head a thousand times today. And then, y'all, come Sunday... The pastor, the guest pastor for um, our church at One Family, he did a sermon on John chapter 10. Chapter 10, the good shepherd the and good the sheep. The shepherd and the sheep. And so this is the second time that John has been brought up to you if you watched last week, last week's episode. So maybe God is trying to tell you something. I agree with that. And so what am I going to do? Let God do his part. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, let's just give y'all a little background what uh, uh, what this sermon this past Sunday that we watched was about. So, Mama. Yeah. So I feel like uh, if you are um, familiar with the Word of God, if you read your Bible, um, there's always analogies that God has given. God is a storyteller. Right. You know, so he's like the ultimate storyteller. He's the author of our lives. And so he always uses an example of the shepherd and the sheep. sheep. Mm -hmm. So uh, using the the uh, characteristics and uh, uh, the likeness of a sheep to almost describe us as right. his sheep <laughs> and then of course jesus christ as the shepherd yeah right mm-hmm. and so i do encourage people to go read john chapter 10 uh, we really have to start getting into the word of god like we, yeah. we got to stop relying on what pastor this said and pastor that said and and that's good to receive a message yeah and don't rely even though it's it's a bomb show Mm-hmm. Don't rely on the chosen. On the chosen. Go and read the Bible. We just start watching the if chosen. You, if you come to me, because the chosen, even though it's very accurate, yeah, it also I I can easily point out where it's fabricated a little bit because I read the Bible and I know what's in the Bible. Absolutely. So if you come to me with some scene from the chosen talking about, did you know that Jesus did this? And it's a scene from the chosen. It actually is not in the Bible at all. I know you. Exactly. I know you. Well, because I know people don't <laughs> like to read. Like, we're bre- like I feel like we're just arriving to the scene uh, that's already been set a long time ago. And so we're, we just started watching The Chosen, but they even give you a whole little disclaimer. Yeah, on season one, like before they even play any episodes where yeah. they tell you, please, they encourage you to go read the Gospels. Yes. Because some things, some backstories and characters and names. They say have been added. Have add been context. added. To add context. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I'll know because I'll be reading the Bible. I don't know if you come to me with some cho- from some scene from the chosen. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I do. I encourage everybody to please go read John chapter 10 mm-hmm. um, for yourselves. Like be your be a fact checker. 
Right. You know, go check the facts. And the best way to check the facts is by directly reading the word of God for yourself. So I do encourage them to read that. But what I was interested about from that um, sermon is it, it just, you know, it just struck me because I know, again, I read my word and I'm like, God really loves using the whole sheep and shepherd thing. thing. So there's several right points and 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 I had to go back myself. I was just curious. And so I was like, well, I used the strong concordance and I wanted to see just how many times like the word sheep showed up in the Bible. I think it was like 189 times. Oh wow. Yeah, throughout he the loves Bible. That sheep story. Exactly. <laughs> so I decided to like push on what was the first occurrence of the word sheep coming up and of course it was in the story of Cain and Abel. Wow. So Genesis. Yeah. The first the, sur- the first chapter. That's chapter four, I think. Yeah. From, yeah. Look at you. Lot y'all. This girl and her studying. I'm telling you, she makes <laughs> me want to catch up. <laughs> she really does. I, I'm I'm grateful. I'm thankful to God for real because you keep me on my toes sometimes. I'd be like, oh let me go read this word because I if I know if I'm gonna talk to this girl, yes. I gotta make sure I'm prepared. And so no, it's in Genesis, uh, the story of Cain and Abel. And again, um, I, I've read the story in Cain and Abel before, but I guess I never, or maybe I missed it, maybe I, I forgot, but of course. Abel was a shepherd. I guess you can. Well, I was going to say he was the first shepherd, but Adam kind of was a shepherd because that is true. Yeah. But he was Abel was the first mentioned. Yes. Shepherd. Yeah. So, yeah. Just identifiable where, of course, he tended to the sheep. The sheep. Yes. Right. And then what struck me is and I don't want to get too much into this, but I'm just kind of trying to let y'all into my mind. Uh, cause you know, I go down rabbit holes sometimes. I don't think this is a good rabbit hole to go down, by the way, when you're, when you're reading and studying the word of God, yeah. like, just let it take you, let it take you where it's going to take you. And so, um, I ended up trying to, um, really understand that. Like what struck me is that you already know the story of Cain and Abel in case you don't know, again, go read it. Right. Um, it's good. And so, mm-hmm. um, but no, so we already know that, uh, Cain actually got really jealous, uh, of Abel and to the point where he killed his brother. Yeah. But the reason why he killed him is that God favored, um, Abel's, Abel's sacrifice, sacrifice to him, yes. which Abel was giving him the first, first born of his, born of his flock. cattle of the flock of sheep. Yeah. So, um, and that was enough to and, and and Cain thought, well, wait a minute, I'm giving you the fruit because he was tending like the 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 plants, the mm-hmm. plants and the gardens he and was all a, of that. A, a, a farmer. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. he didn't understand why God was favoring the offering from Abel um, over what he was. Well, offering. actually, I would I, see this. I'm getting down rabbit hole. I would challenge that he didn't understand. Yeah, because um, if he didn't. Because God actually asked Cain, why are you angry? Mm-hmm. And he's not saying, he like, did. why are you angry? He's saying, like, yeah. why are you angry? You know, you know why I'm favoring Abel right now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, he you did. know, you well, reevaluate yourself. Him. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like uh, I was reading that one verse where he kind of came out and, and, and told him. And that's what, because it, I remember I was, kinda, listen, I always sometimes, like, God be, I ain't going to lie, I be getting kind of nervous about how he be <laughs> doing. Because cause it, the stuff people be doing, it be it be stuff that I be doing. Right. And so I get real nervous. So I just be like, wait a minute, why are you smiting them? <laughs> like, you know, but no. So um I was reading for myself to try to understand, well, I don't know. I mean, fruit is good. Right. You know, like it's good. And so uh as if you read in those passages, you kind of see God is kind of explaining to Cain the difference was that Abel was giving his first, mm-hmm. meaning his best. The best, yeah. Right, where I think Cain was uh, just giving him. He just was giving Cain him just stuff. treated the the sacrifice, the offering, yeah, as just like a, a ritual, like a routine thing. Yes. Like, oh, here you go, kind of yes. like taxes. Mm-hmm. It's taxes. Yeah, here. Make sure I put some to the side. Yeah, for the Lord. Look, yeah, that's for the Lord. Yeah, and it's oh, they got a little, they got a little rotten spot. It's okay, right? So instead of maybe giving him the best of the first harvest or the best out of the harvest, he just gave him a piece. He just was making sure he gave him some. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of how it was, which was translating. But um, but that struck me 
And uh, and I thought initially, I'm like, it's interesting that in the first instance where they're mentioning a sheep and shepherd, it is Abel. And Abel is someone that God uh, favored how April. Uh, April. Love. Speak, Lord. <laughs> no, <I'm ready. laughs> you right. You know how. Um, the Holy Spirit struck me in that moment. Exactly. That's right how God was favoring Favoring April. Right. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) no, so that like struck me that um, he was favorable to how April. Abel. (laughs) (laughs) Abel was shepherding (laughs) his flock. So. Speak, Lord. I mean, you know, like what you trying, what you trying to say to me? So, um, anyways, I and that just sent me down a whole rabbit tr- uh, trail to kind of see all the references. We already know the great day. I love me some David. Mm-hmm. I love David's story. I identify with David's story. A lot of pieces of David's story, and so we know that David also was a shepherd. Yeah. And and a good shepherd at that. He really tended to his flock very well. Well, there's a lot of if. You didn't notice that all of the men that God called for his purposes and his promises, yes. the men that we that that are often quoted from the Bible, mm-hmm. were all shepherds by trade. Yes. Abraham was a shepherd. Mm. Moses was a shepherd. Come on. People were like, well, Moses was a prince of Egypt. What are you talking about? No, remember that when he went off, when he had to escape, yes. when he ran away, mm-hmm. he was a shepherd for a little while. Yeah, when he got married and all yeah, that stuff, he, was he a sure shepherd. was. Uh, of course, Jesus refers to himself as a shepherd. David was That's a shepherd. The good Isaac, shepherd. Isaac was a shepherd. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had it. We had to reverse it back. Right. You said Jesus. Jesus <laughs> is the good shepherd. Right. Um. And so that's kind of what the topic was about. And so, of course, that resonated with me. I would uh, even suggest, I don't know how you guys study the Bible, but I get curious about stuff. And Mm -hmm. just that, like you saw that rabbit hole I went down, I just wanted to see like, oh, and I just was making all the parallels between people's stories that we know about people's testimonies, right? Remember, the Bible is a book uh, full of testimonies of the people of God. Um, And so it's nothing different from me sharing a testimony uh, with you guys or someone else sharing a testimony with you guys. And so uh, for those of you who uh, never kind of that didn't dawn on you, uh, that the Bible is this great book of collections of people telling their testimonies, uh, people of God. And it's really ultimately in a full collection of God's story because yeah. we're kind of we're all a part of God's story. So that's kind of how I do, you know, my Bible study. I get real curious about things and uh, with the with the power of the Holy Spirit, kind of I'm led in that. And so that's kind of where I was led. And so, um, again, his whole sermon was just about the good shepherd and how God is how he tends to us, how he tends to us and we're his sheep. And so I got really curious as to, again, he keeps using this to describe us. So then, you know, diving and, and, um, Drew who, who did this, the guest speaker for the the service, he kind of went a little bit into the nature of sheep. Gave us the background of sheep. Yeah. And a shepherd They're in their relationship. Yeah. I kind of like how he mentioned, you know, sheep are kind of, you know, they're not the brightest. They're not the brightest of, <laughs> of the livestock. <laughs> and, and if we're going to be honest, uh, I've done some really foolish things. <laughs> <laughs> I actually read from a quote, yeah. which I wrote down. So I'll make sure I got it right. Mm-hmm. And this person, this person's unknown, the author. So I can't give credit where, where credit is due. But he said that the behavior of sheep and human beings is similar in many ways. Sheep do not just take care of themselves, as some might suppose. They require more than any other class of livestock, endless attention Mm. and meticulous care. Yes, because if we don't, I'm going to fall. Yes. Constantly falling. Yes. Constantly making mistakes. (laughs) And that's why I think that Jesus and God... Because he used uh, the shepherd and sheep. God himself used it a lot in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that is such a good analogy of how we act when it comes to God. We're we're the sheep. I agree. And God is a shepherd. And Mm -hmm. and our relationship with God is like, it's it's almost like a mirror. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, and and even with the, the, the shepherd, right? The shepherd lays down his life 
for the sheep. A good one. A good one. A, a good, good shepherd. shepherd. Ooh, I like that. Let's make that Because be known. there yeah. are shepherds. Actually, this is in, look, y'all, read the Bible. It's in Ezekiel where God is saying, you shepherd that sit there and eat all the fat while your sheep are dying. You do not lift up the weak. He just went in on them, y'all. Y'all yeah. need to go see it. Ezekiel. He went in on them shepherds. Yeah. Them false shepherds. Yeah. So there's a difference it. between a false shepherd yeah. and the good shepherd. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, even in 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 chapter in John uh chapter 10, mm -hmm. it starts off with talking about a thief. Right. You know, you're not you're not the shepherd, the one who crawls over the wall instead exactly. of coming through the door mm -hmm. of the of the sheep pen. Right. You know, and so that's the hired hand. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, all of that really, really hit me. And when we're talking about a good shepherd, right, he, a good shepherd lays down his life for you. Again, that is in the word. Right. And so um, we already know. Jesus is the good shepherd. Sacrificed himself. Right. For us. Period. I'm done. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say that because, like, period. Exactly. Like, <laughs> put put some put some emphasis on it, some singing on it. No, that's really good. And so I, um, you know, of course, I took tons of notes about that. But I'm gonna let you know, I'm not done with my study on this. Right. I'm not I, either. I, I really want to continue to go deeper. But there was two questions that he posed in this in this sermon that I really wanted it to be the topic of our discussion today. So one, before we get into this, I encourage you all to, of course, read the word of God. Please get into it. And if you see me in real life, let's talk about it. Like, let's really have let's a conversation have a about it. Let's have a brave conversation. Yes. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, if you, if you have time, make the time to get into your word. And if you are somebody who I see on a daily basis at work or commute to work or even a family member or friend who I may see on the weekends, um, let's talk about it. Let's get into the word and let's talk about it. Um, and then I also encourage you to go uh, look at the reruns of the sermon. They are on YouTube. If you go to one family church, right, mm. you can go to onefamilychurch.com and get connected that way. And you can also download the one family app. OK. Right. All right. So to rewatch those uh, sermons. But in the meantime, there are two questions that he posed that I really kind of wanted it to be the topic of our conversation today. Yes. All right. And so he asked, recall a time when you felt lost or hopeless. Right. All the time. All the time. <laughs> I have so many times where I felt lost. Um. And so many times where I felt hopeless, and that's just me speaking real. Yeah. Um, but there's one time in particular when he was, uh, you know, speaking and doing the service, instantly what popped up in my head was probably one of the most lowest uh, moments of my, of my life, which is when um, I was 12 years old, uh, heading toward, it was, I was on the back end of 12 years old, so um, heading closer to 13, and I had been experiencing prolonged severe depression. Mm. Okay. And I don't use the word severe lightly. It was pretty severe. It was so severe that it began to manifest itself physically in my body. So I was going through um, bouts of insomnia and I'm talking about real bad insomnia where it was, I, I was up for more than 24 hours at a time, not working or anything just, and I couldn't sleep and, and I was sleepy. I don't know. So if anybody, you guys may be resonating with me, those of you who, uh, if you have unfortunately experienced this. And so I was sleepy. Uh, having insomnia is not like you're just alert and woke all the time. I was very exhausted and very sleepy, yet rest would not come to me. Mm. Okay. And I uh, began to experience body ache, like deep, profound body ache to the point where if you touched me with your finger, if you just poked me, it hurt. You would feel it. It hurt it. It hurt. It was like, out, you know, because that's just how tender and oh, wow. sore my body was. So it began to manifest itself um, in my body. I was hungry, but yet couldn't eat. Like you just didn't have the energy to eat. So I didn't have uh, I, I, I was hungry, but yet didn't have the appetite. 
And and and, wow. if I'm, and, I, and if I'm going to speak on this, I, I want people to understand. I'm not going to get into uh, all the the details of of that, but I think it's important for people to understand uh, that this wasn't um, some very uh, laxy daisy type experience that I was going through. So I was. This is this sounds like clinical. Like if you were to be diagnosed today, mm-hmm. you would probably be sent to. A, a mental health facility. Oh, I'm sure. At this point, I'm sure I likely would have been hospitalized. Yeah, and, you know, had I got any attention or help that I needed at the they time, they probably would have put you on medication, antidepressants. Oh, absolutely. But here's heavy the thing: stuff. I want to tell you something. I doubt if it would have worked. Right. And I say that because my depression was heavily brought on by my environment at the time. And so, uh, to give context to that, um, I was in an environment where there was heavy substance abuse. Okay. Mm. So it was heavy substance abuse going on. And so with that, I I say that sometimes and, and there, there may be people who have never experienced that, um, um, have been blessed enough to not experience, uh, anything, uh, anything of that nature in life. But what that meant was um, when you have your household leadership, if you will, um, your household parental guides um, uh, deep into heavy substance abuse, what happens is that there's heavy levels of neglect going on. Right. And so to where even your basic needs are not being met. So your very basic needs are not being met. Um, and so we're talking about food, clothing, shelter. These things are not being met or not adequately being met, you know, at for the, long periods of time, for long periods of time. Mm-hmm. And so um, and this had been going on um, for a very long time. And I just think that over time, I, I, I dipped deeper and deeper into depression. So this was like going on from like and correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. since you were two to twelve. Yeah. So since I can, I, I have memories from when, you know, I was two on up and then there's other things that come with that. Right. When you're living such a lifestyle, there's other levels of dysfunction uh, that you're constantly around or involved in. Right. And so, yes, it, 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 it most of my recollection of hardships have started that young mm. um, and then leading up to that point yeah but i feel like things were definitely much worse towards the the tail end leading up to that point okay right and um and it was just i mean it was a lot and i think mentally for the for the for the best that a 12 year old can do i was i was really trying to hold on you know, I was really trying to fight and, and, and be and be strong, you know, that the strength that somehow you're supposed to just somehow have. Right. Um, and so the I was willpower. Re- the, yeah. All of that. I was really trying to hang on. Um, but I was barely pulling myself. I had got to the point where I wasn't combing my hair. I had got to the point where I wasn't changing uh, my clothes. I had on pajamas, the same pajamas for weeks. Mm. I'm going to be real with y'all because this is real. People are going through this. There's somebody, whether it's a teenager, whether it's an adult, they're going through this. This is what they're going through. And I need to be very clear. And I, I want to be very open and transparent of this because, y'all, I was saved by the good shepherd. Do you understand me? And so I have reached the, the, the highest levels of, of severe depression to the point where I thought my best solution was to end my life. And so I had came to the conclusion that what I was going to do um, was I was going to end my life. And what's so sad about that is that the enemy had me convinced that I had truly made the best decision. Um, He was deceiving me to the point where I even felt relief. I felt like a burden had been lightened because I had reached that conclusion that that's what I was going to do. And so I got to the point where I began to then contemplate the how. Mm. The how. And was really day and night going through the motions and the thoughts of what would be the best way to do that. 12 years old. 
And I was up all night in the bedroom. It's about 2, 3 in the morning. Because, again, I was dealing with insomnia. And I couldn't sleep. And, um, oh, I felt so, such despair. Such despair and hopelessness. It was real heavy. And I remember hearing God, not knowing at the time that here I was about to have one of the first conversations that I can recall with God. And so, you know how people say they talk about the audible voice of God. Yeah. And I mean, you were talking about that. We've been talking about that for a while. And, yes. you know, you were like, I think Drew even mentioned, I'm not one of those people that have ever heard yeah, the audible was, voice of I God. I was glad to hear him say that because same. Like, yeah, I've never heard the audible voice of God, but Correct. I have heard God has been speaking to me. Yeah. I think the best way that I can explain it, because, um, I, you know, here's the thing. There's no b- b- right. This is God talking. You know, I mean, I don't <laughs> know what people expect to, to, to hear, but I will tell you this for me, and this is what I've learned just from my experience. Um, we listen with our ears, but we can also listen with our hearts. Do you understand me? And so I can't tell you whether it was something that I heard more than what I felt in my heart. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Can you can you feel light? I think you can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can see light, but you can feel it, too. Um, You know, just as you can hear a voice, but you can feel it, too. Yeah. And so um, I can't tell you which one, but I did hear a voice. But it was small and quiet. Ooh, I can't remember. Who was that? Was it um, Elisha or Elijah? Oh, don't do that. Because our show is going to be I like. I don't know which it one. Was it, was e- one of the, it was one of the E's. Elisha. It was Elisha. It was Elisha. Where Elisha. God whispered. Exactly. In his ear. It wasn't exactly. no big. Elisha. Exactly. It was like a. It was like he said. It was whispered like the wind. Like it was just like a wind just passing by his. Yeah. By his ear. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was. It was very. It was very calm. It was very small. Um. It was almost like the equivalent, and I hate to use this example, but it was like a. It was like a Michael Myers of the voice. It was unbothered. Lord. It was unrushed. You know what I'm saying? You know how Michael be Houston, right. He just be walking, baby. He be I walking. mean, people be people be sprinting. They be running for the like they doing the uh a fast dash. <laughs> yes, and he just here he go just walking. I mean, a really <laughs> light, unbothered head lifted, right? Cause stiff cause, look, because Michael like, look, I'm about to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm stop not. coming from Why you. am I putting in effort exactly. when we all know the outcome of this? Exactly. <laughs> but that's kind of how it was. It was like not this, you know, over the top type thing. Um, and he spoke to me and he simply told me to go get the Bible. We had one Bible in our house, and it's the old school King James Version, that leather, uh, and it was maroon. And without revealing revealing the 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 year they didn't have google Mm -mm. they didn't have they had to go to that library you know them stories i know people my age probably heard the story a bunch of times i had to walk through six feet of snow exactly over the train tracks through rushed hour traffic over a mountain I don't to, know how I feel about this because just what I had to hear so you basically talking about get, me i didn't say which parent i heard this from okay whatever okay I ain't say, babe. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, but yeah. So I'm just, saying, I'm just want to let people know that, this, like, because like for those people that's like, why didn't you just look it up? Like, why didn't you just use a different translation? They didn't have no different translation. It was only King James version. Yeah. No, she she couldn't go to the library again. It's three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And absolutely. Yeah. No Google. None and, of that. I, listen, even if those things existed, I don't think we could have afforded them. All right. Because at that time, exactly. You know, so that mm-hmm. that was another factor. But no um, internet. But yeah, I had heard, you know, the voice of God, and He told me to go get the Bible. 
Mm-hmm. And I did. And so what's so ironic is, of course, I didn't understand King James Version at that time. Like, I didn't understand anything that I was reading. But you want to know the beauty of what I heard him say next when I grabbed the Bible? The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, wow. The Lord is my shepherd is what came to me. And so I knew that verse, right? Just growing up, I had a praying, I had a praying grandmother. grandmother. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For real. And so I, um. Psalms 23. Yes. For people who don't know, it's Psalms 23. It's Psalms 23. But do you know, a 12 year old April didn't know that it was Psalms 23 at the time. April just know that she had heard that phrase before. Mm -hmm. the Lord is my shepherd. So I frantically started looking through the Bible because I know that that's where I'm being led. And again, I'm talking about this in hindsight, but I think it's important for people to know, like I didn't know any of this, Mm -hmm. the the, the nature of God, the nature of my, I know my relationship. I know his voice. This sheep. My sheep will know my voice. Knows his voice. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I know that that's where I was being led. And so I'm like frantically flipping through the pages, but we know the Bible, how many books are in it. I couldn't there. It was right. like a needle in a haystack for somebody that was untrained. You had to use the, the, the glossary. And yeah. Well, um, I don't think I was that smart. the table of content no 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 daughter no daughter so i don't i don't i didn't use that i didn't think oh man you just then kind of made me feel some type of way no i didn't go to the glossary (laughs) no but you want to know what i kept doing i i couldn't find it unfortunately and dealing with my insomnia i just kept saying it over and over Mm. the lord is my shepherd and in my head, not not out loud, but just in my head, I kept repeating it. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And I would intermittently try to look for it again. But again, it's, it's just it's just hard to find. And so um, I did this all until daybreak started coming through. The sun started shining, um, you know, through the curtains. And so um, I, when I felt like it was it was an, an acceptable time, I called my grandmother and I said, Granny, you know, she answered and I said, Granny. Uh, where in the Bible does it say the Lord is my shepherd? And of course, she's like Psalms 23, and she leads me to where to find it. And I began to recite Psalms 23 over and over again, and it was my saving grace. It began to slowly pull me out of the depression. Mm. So I just had this moment of like a mini tele-testimony series right now. But that was the time that um, when, he, when he said that instantly my mind went back to that time and yeah. how the good, the good shepherd mm-hmm. who shepherded his sheep, he called his sheep. His sheep was lost. Please read, the, re, please read chapter uh, 10 of, of John, the book of John, you guys. 10. But his, his, he called me by name. Ooh, Do you understand me? Yeah. He called me by name. He, I heard his voice and he went to find me. I was lost. He found his lost sheep and he brought me back into the pen. And he was a good shepherd. He guarded the door. Do you understand me? Since then. Mm. Since then. Since then. My life changed, you know, at that moment. And I've seen many ups and downs. I've seen so many places. I think that's going to be. Back. It did. <laughs> she just thought, because she, she didn't think she did it good the first time. So she just thought she had exactly. to bring that back to give you another test run. No, I don't know. Every time I talk about that, I, I think about that whole, that whole little verse. But, um, but I've seen many, many highs and many lows. But my life from that moment has never been the same. And so when he was talking about the sermon, it instantly that went um, for me. So I don't know about you. If you, if you, I think you already talked about it. You talked about it in your I last episode. I talked about it last week uh, about, especially now currently, about, you know, my little bouts of hopelessness that I have, mm-hmm. which is, it's ironic that he talked about that and he used John chapter 10. And I told people that that was my saving grace, John chapter 10, verse 10. Yeah. And so, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think where I am, I'm probably likely going to be studying on the Good Shepherd for a while. 
Yeah. Because it's important, you guys. Sometimes we think we have to keep rolling with the next new sermon that's released. And it's fine to view them. But as far as meditating, really digging into the word of God, it's okay to stay, to remain at yeah. certain verses or even Just in certain one, chapters one verse, right. for however long you need until something is revealed. Receive a revelation from the word of God from those things. You so really let it meditate. Yes. Let it sink in. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be studying this this for a while, that whole concept of, of, of the reading occurring him using uh, right. the story the characteristics of the shepherd and the sheep um i'm gonna stick with that because uh yeah and so uh <laughs> so that it can it can it can um sink in and so if you want to hear autumn's moment where she felt really hopeless again she recorded that in her last um episode but the next question that he asked and he kind of took us home with right was where is Jesus leading you to follow him now? Yes. And what are your objections to it? So when he left me with that, like, I, to be honest, I didn't have an answer leaving the church, to be honest with you. I had to sit and meditate on it because, like, I had to really, like, sink, sink, let it sink in and really yeah. be honest with myself in that moment. Yeah. Um, and so during my study time, um, I read on, I read about John and that's what I do. Like when, when a chapter is brought forth, I like to know who, re- who wrote it. And I like to know the, where, you know, how they were mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. And so I read um, John chapter 21 and it's um, three days after Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, you know, he, he spent some time with the disciples and this is the third time that the, 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 the disciples see Jesus. Mm-hmm. OK, and so uh, it's this moment where Jesus is on the shore and, you know, Peter and them, um, <laughs> Peter and them, <laughs> <laughs> Peter and them, Peter and them are out fishing. They yeah. didn't they didn't catch anything. It's ironic that the way Je- the way that Jesus met Peter is also the way that he left them. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to know what I'm talking about, read yes, the Bible. Yes, please. But, um, so Peter, at first they notice that a man is on the shore from far away, but they don't know that that's Jesus. They don't notice that it's Jesus until the man says, uh, cast your nets. Mm-hmm. And then they had an abundance of fish and they like, oh my God, that's Jesus. So they, they Peter rushes off the boat because, you know, Peter was down for Jesus. Yeah. He was down for Jesus. Peter rushes off the boat. He didn't even wait till they get to the shore. The other ones rolled in, ra- rolled in. They were like, oh, Peter looked crazy. But, (laughs) but, um, so Jesus asks, I'm not going to go into detail, but like Jesus asks Peter, do you love me three times? Mm -hmm. And there's symbolic, there's symbolism behind that. Why he asked him three times, do you love me? Mm -hmm. And each time Peter would answer, yes, Jesus, I love you. Jesus Mm -hmm. was like, Jesus would reply, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. He asked him again, do you love me? And then he said, tend to my sheep. Mm -hmm. Peter, Peter replied, yes, Jesus, I love you. Then Jesus replied, tend to my sheep. Wow. He asked him a third time. Peter says, yes, I love, I love you. And then P- Jesus did like a longer reply then. Yeah. But I just focused on the fact that like when Jesus left his last, not his last words, but like his last messages, his series of last messages was tend to my sheep. Yeah. Feed my sheep. Cause he is the good shepherd. Yeah. But he's also calling us to be to shepherds. Be shepherds. Yes. Autumn, why I wrote and so that? I that wrote is that the, right here. Yes. That yeah. is the resistance. That's where I feel like I am right now. I feel like God, Jesus has been telling me to be a shepherd in a way. Wow. Yeah. And now I'm not saying I'm resistant to it because like, look what I'm doing. Um, mm-hmm. But I have been, I, in order for me to be a shepherd, I have to become more than what I am. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a tiring process. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of self-reflection and a lot of, you know, stuff being revealed about myself that I don't like to hear, Mm -hmm. but, and that's a lot of things that I need to fix. Yeah. It makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's the thing. I'm happy that you said that because for me, and I've kind of, I've, I've had this conversation with a couple people so far, Mm -hmm. uh, other fellow Christians, other followers of Christ, um, of recent time. And what's so funny is that they said the same thing initially, which is, I don't, think that i'm having any issues right or i don't think that there's anywhere god is uh leading me um to follow him that i'm not and i remember thinking to myself when i heard that response like either i'm like the worst <laughs> <laughs> like i'm like the worst follower like ever what are you talking about i have constant 
objections because it's just what you said. It gets very uncomfortable when he's calling you to higher levels of devotion, Mm -hmm. higher levels of discipline, higher levels of discipleship. Yeah. You know? And so um, it's also a a period of self-discovery. Like mm -hmm. for me, at least. I've been really, God has been re- revealing who I am. And it's shocking for me to hear because I didn't believe the things that he, was, he is revealing to me. Yeah. To be honest, I still don't believe halfway. I'm like, okay, you got the wrong person. <laughs> Wait a minute, that was Moses. Yeah, but God, but God, <laughs> exactly. but God. That was his favorite line. That was Moses' favorite line. But God. I know. I was. <laughs> I started to get annoyed once that was pointed out to me. I'm like, oh, he is kind of tripping. But, right. But look, that's me. Though. Every excuse. I just said that's me right now. So, yeah, that's where I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and so it's okay. But I like, can I go back to something? I just want to let everybody know just how good God is. So you were just talking about, I, I need it now, um, note to self, go look up God asking Peter. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus asking Peter three times. I know about the other three times. Right, the other three times. I'm going to deny, <laughs> you're going to deny, deny me, me three, three times. times. <laughs> uh, and Peter's like, no, I'm not. But anyway, that's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole another story but um i need to go research that because what i wrote down is i was when i was writing my notes i was feel led to write what is the importance to know the nature and characteristics of the sheep and the shepherd mm. and the holy spirit literally la- answered me and i said it's important to know the nature of the shepherd because not only is jesus the good shepherd but he's calling us to be Ooh. that was the answer that the that yeah. that I wrote down, yeah. like literally, I wrote the question down. Like, what is the important? Because again, you know, I told you guys, I'm I get curious when right. I'm doing my Bible study, and so I'm like, what is the importance of knowing the nature <clears throat> of the, and the characteristics of the sheep and the shepherd? And the Holy Spirit answered me instantly, and I was able to write that that answer down. So when you just said what you just said, that was just a, a, a another powerful moment for me. Like, wow, yeah. here, here he is again. Uh, mm-hmm. explaining in a little bit more detail and even leading me. So I take stuff personal. I don't take things as a coincidence. Yeah. And so I know we're kind of like filming this right now. We're kind of having this open discussion or conversation and others are oh, listening. Oh, God in. is always talking to us. He don't always. care what the circumstances are. No, I don't care because you record. <laughs> Humble yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Here you go. More stuff to go ponder on and study and dig deeper so you may know my nature. It's funny because like I feel like that <laughs> what jesus peter took what jesus said to him in that moment to heart because later in peter mm-hmm. um first is it first peter i feel like he wrote multiple um parts it is first peter chapter five mm-hmm. verses one through five okay where he is telling um uh he's writing basically an epistle i think it's called mm-hmm. to the christians currently being uh, persecuted in rome and he's basically telling them um, to be good, good shepherds okay. of the flock. Yeah. And so I feel like he took that message to heart when mm-hmm. Jesus told him. And he's trying to tell other people that you also need to be shepherds. Yeah. Of your flock. Absolutely. Whatever, whatever flock that is. Shout out to Peter. Right. Yeah. He made some mistakes. He did. He, he made did. some mistakes. He did. I mean, he, him, and he got into it. He a got it. He got a little, Paul. he had a little strife, a little controversy with Paul. Yeah. You know, but yeah. they but they fixed it. They did. They fixed it. For the greater good. It didn't good. linger. For the greater good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know I, this ain't like choose a side. Right. Edward versus Jacob. Read that in Galatians. <laughs> <laughs> Peter and and Paul, that is, right. not Edward and Jacob. No, no, that's the, not that's not in the Bible. That's not exactly. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. So that's what really uh, I I feel like for me, um, just to wrap this conversation up. For me, um, like what what are my objections? I would have to agree and say it's some bit of the same. I mean, I don't think that I'm. You, you're always on a um, discovery of self, right? Um, I don't think self can really be completely revealed because we're always. Oh yeah, our, evolving. our understanding is uh incomplete. Yeah. 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 Always, always 
evolving and changing, um, growing. Right. And so, um, but, and so I don't know if it's like, maybe we're not at the same levels of self-discovery, right? But it's the same thing for me. I think my objections is when I hear that call to follow him into a deeper level of devotion, um, you know, your flesh gets uncomfortable. The flesh, the flesh likes what it likes. Mm. The flesh likes to binge watch Netflix. I actually mentioned that in my past episode. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, now, you know, I'm just saying, I like that. I'd much rather, you know, be doing anything else. Right. Other than stuff that's going to um, really help me with my, my discipline and self-control, mm-hmm. um, which I feel that a lot of people lack in today's society. Because it's all about self pleasure and self gratification. Message. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's it. I would say it's the same thing, but this is definitely not the last time. I mean, I really welcome you all to have this conversation. And in fact, if you want to have the conversation with us, please join me um, in my life group for tell a testimony on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We're still in the middle of summer session. It will end at the end of Pretty July. Soon. But please catch me in the fall where our fall sessions will go live sometime in September. I'll give you the exact dates then. But this is the type of stuff that we discuss to have more self-reflection. Yeah. To really go deeper. We discussed this with another group of fellow believers, various mm-hmm. level and stages of life. Yeah. Where we're sharing these very things. We're contemplating these things and hoping like challenging each other to go deeper into Christ. Deeper to know Christ. So Amen. Amen. With that being said. That's the day. <laughs> All right, now. I love it. So that is the end of this episode of Brave Conversations. We're going to leave you with two questions. And those questions are. Recall a time where you felt lost or hopeless. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I need you to ask yourself the hard question. Where, where, what area of life, uh, what part of your life, where is Jesus calling you yet again to come follow him? Those are for current believers who's already accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. For those of you who have not, I think that's your calling. That's where yeah. he's asking you to come follow. Come follow me. Mm-hmm. He says that a lot. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you can uh, leave us a voice message through Spotify for podcasters. If you're listening to the podcast version of this, just go down to the show notes. There should be a link where you can leave us a voice message that we could later use in our future episodes if you want that to happen. I can, you know, automate your voice, disguise you. We don't got to say no names. But if you want to speak, then speak. Okay? Absolutely. You can also just DM us or leave a comment down on our social media pages at Brave Convos. For my people that's just listening, that is at sign B R A V E C O N V O S. Follow us both on Facebook and Instagram at those tag names. Now, please meditate on those questions and let God do his part. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, all right now. It's the most oh say one not they orimas. Jamita. Bye. Bye bye.